back then, like, it sounds like so long ago, right? <laughs> Like, you don't think of females at the gym. Even if you think of females at the gym, they'll probably be on the treadmill or doing some cardio. Reach it out each time. Further, 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 reach. Further, 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 reach. Further. So you just think of men grunting, weight slamming, rust on the bar, grime. Probably half as accurate, but like, a lot of negative connotation to that. A lot of like, burly roughness and like, just just rowdiness, I guess. As always, parents being parents, to them seeing their girl lifting weights, they were quite concerned, you know? Like, they are like, oh, um, are you gonna look like a man? Are you gonna be able to have kids? You know, like, oh, your hands are so rough now, you're covered in bruises. Hi guys, my name is Mahana Farid. I'm 29 years old. I'm a trained pharmacist by day and I'm a power lifter by night. Growing up, I couldn't keep still, so there's always something that I wanted to do. I guess I was quite sporty. I liked to play with the boys, I think with my uncles who played soccer here and there. But yeah, so I did like a bit of track and field in secondary school. I did netball and eventually I took up running. Running came about when I think the first run that I took part in was the Nike Goddess Run. That was probably like 2012. I think it was held in Sentosa and it was an all-female run. So it, it was like picture perfect. It was like sundown with a bunch of ladies running. So adrenaline was high and like that I, I, I wanted to chase that high. So I think I caught the running bug from there. So after one run, like I signed up for another run and another run and eventually I got into the routine of running. I started noticing like how running, it, it transitioned from being a healthy hobby into becoming a very unhealthy one was when I took like an hour, it was an hour long to decide on what I wanted to eat. So that mental aspect also like, I think the focus was just, just on clocking in mileage, you know, no care about anything else, like um, no consideration about whether I was treating my body right. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it, it purely became was an obsession. Also, the most glaring thing was that I stopped getting my period for like a full year. The moment I decided to get me to see a guy me and then she's like you know what I'm not gonna give you anything I'm not gonna treat you for anything all I'm gonna tell you to do is to just stop running and eat more like that was it I stopped going out with my friends because eating was such a stressful situation because you know they want to go out to eat at certain places and I'm like that's not macro friendly and I feel like it's a diet sabotage almost and so like I have to bail on my friends so even if I go out with my family I'd have my own little lunch box of like salads and like food that I would cook for myself because I know what what I put in there right so Hari Raya was very stressful for me because it's like a macros bomb so thankfully I have like two other sisters so we're always like sharing things like even up to now like they call me a rat because I just want to take a bite and then I'm like okay no I don't want to ready so so I'll just take a bit of something you know just just to please whoever just take a bite and then like I just won't eat everything during those periods I will also like put in extra effort to clock in more mileage to just like counter off the calories boyfriend is a gym rat so we kind of just got together then so all our dates were centered around his gym sessions so after a while I'm like what's so great about this place you know like you go there every single day doing the same thing meeting the same people like what's so great about this and he was like you know what how about you come and then like uh, we explored different sort of programs and eventually they did up like programs for me like catered for me and then that was how like I made progress and then there was one fine day, the boys decided to have a mock meet to just test their one rep max and I was like, okay, you know what guys, you guys 
do what you do and I'll just be the host to oversee this whole thing. And then they're like, no, no, how about you just try? Like, you know, nothing, it's just what you've been doing anyway. I, I was like, okay, fine, you know what, let's deadlift, sure. And then I deadlifted and then my boyfriend like, was just scrolling through a thing, like something on his phone. And he was like, do you know you just deadlifted above the national record at the gym? And I was like, what does that even mean? You know, like what does that even mean to me? I was like, that's, that's, that's good, but what, what, what national record? Like who's keeping tabs on these records, you know? recognize that I felt good being this strong like I felt good being this muscular it didn't matter if I was like thick or if I was skinny but as long as I was this strong and this capable like that's all that mattered also like I think my support system like my boyfriend and a group of friends like they didn't care how I look you know they, they they only supported me with like what I did my achievements so I felt like that was much less superficial and much more substantial so I decided to like ride on that positive vibe, so it's a journey as a person. So I felt like whatever knowledge I had, so many girls out there, so many people out there like benefit from this knowledge. So that's why I decided to be a powerlifting coach. It was really just me nudging them to the right direction and showing them like how much more capable they are doing and that like you don't need to chase aesthetics, to feel good, to even look good. I think it boils down to being comfortable in your own skin. And when people recognize like the confidence, the vibes you have, people are gonna admire that and people will find that attractive. Yeah, work your own vibe, embrace it, and that's gonna get you far.